Right, so um, today, today I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm starting a new topic, um, which uh, we will call uh, concentration inequalities. And um, basically, this is this is a way to um, uh, go go transition from um, a uncertainty to near certainty. Okay, so um, eventually, with enough samples, uh, I can. Um, I can say that the behavior will be a certain behavior with near certainty. That's 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 the that's the pattern I, I want to follow. Okay. And um, uh, it has this type of concentration inequalities have have uh, application in um, in. Uh, uh, in, in in things like uh, algorithmic random algorithms and um, also in machine learning um, pack, pack learning for instance uh, very heavily depends on it but also like practical techniques um, uh that has to do with uh analysis empirical analysis of machine learning and using all kind of statistical techniques parametric and non-parametric they can benefit from these this type of uh techniques so it's it's at the foundation of uh techniques that we use uh in order to control uh um control uh, uncertainty and uh, turn it into near certainty. <laughs> okay. Um, and I start with one of them, which is very simple, uh, but it's, it's, it gets us started. Um, and, and of course, there's, there's more material on this in the lecture notes that uh, I sent in the email. So you can go ahead and look at the at the write up and and uh, ask me any questions afterwards. Um, so assume, uh, are there any questions or comments on the background before I start with the with the Markov inequality? Okay. Okay, so um, assume you have uh, a random variable x that uh, only accept uh, positive values. So usually, uh, you know, very briefly, what is a random variable? A random variable is a mapping from, if you if you like, uh, a probability space to the real numbers. So for instance, the probability space would, could be um, tossing a coin, okay? And the, the real, the, the, the value um, of the result could be like a number up that represents up or down, okay? So one and minus one. For instance, okay, so um, but but it could be like dice dices. So so uh, the random variable could be you know whether it it was even the sum of the two results were even or not. Um, that could be an indicator random variable, for instance. So random variable is just just uh, a function on probabilities. Um, on uh, result of sampling from a probability space. And we assume that the random variable is, is positive, always accept positive values. 
and we have some number that is bigger than zero a, then the expectation of the random variable um, uh, bounds the probability that the random variable will be bigger than a. You see on the right, the probability that the random variable is bigger than a is bounded by the average divided by a. If instead of uh, a you put it, you put here a times the 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 expectation, you will get here one over a, which is if a is bigger than one, then one over a is a small number. So you you're bounding the you you're bounding the probability of uh, being far away from the uh, expectation. So, so you can ask yourself, what's the probability of the random variable being uh, uh, two times further away from the expectation, two times the expectation? So you get something that is smaller than a half, just as an example. Um, so that's that's the mark of inequality. And let, let's see why the mark of inequality is true. So first I assume that the, the random variable is continuous. And um, continuous means you have uh, a density function. That's f of x, the integral of f of x from minus infinity to infinity is one. That's that uh, f is the density, so it just spread spread the the probability mass all over the real number, the real line. The other the other case is where um, x is discrete and it's it's an exercise you can try it out when you look at the lecture notes. Um, so. So the expectation, this is the expectation. You maybe you're used to this. Uh, just um, think about f of the as the pro probability. So it's the value that the random variable gets times the probability, and we sum it in such a way that uh, in a continuous way from minus infinity to infinity. So that's the expectation. Um, now, because the, the random variable, we said that the random variable is positive, then it, it only assumes values, the probability of it assuming values that are negative is zero. So this is equal to the integral from zero to infinity. And up to here, any questions? Okay. Okay, so so now the because a is bigger than zero, we can um, we can integrate from zero to a and then from a to infinity. And now because here from zero to a, um, x is as we said positive and f of x. Well, we know that x is positive it goes from zero to a, and f of x is always positive. It's it's a density, so the integral is positive. So this is this is bigger than just from uh, the integral from a to infinity. We can drop this and we get something big. Now the integral from a to infinity, um, if we if we put here instead of x a smaller value a because because x is going from a to infinity so if we substitute it by a it's a smaller value here everywhere so it could, it's going to be the smaller integral because a times f of x is always smaller than x times f of x so therefore the this integral is smaller than this integral and now you only have here a constant, so you take the constant out. And the integral from a to 
infinity of the density is just the probability that x is going to be bigger than you got um, you got that the the average is bigger than a times the probability of x bigger than a and now dividing by a you get this we get the result that we wanted and um that's the proof that uh, of the Markov inequality, which is the, you know, the first tool uh, that that we will be learning for for the purpose of uh, um, designing machine learn uh, in in uh, analyzing machine learnings and random algorithms. Okay. Uh, any questions about uh, the derivation of the Markov inequality? Um, maybe I can also read offline, but the last how the how the last inequality is true. I I didn't get that one. This, this one going from here to here. Yeah, from that until that I got, but yeah, after this. Yes. Okay. Let, let's let's look at it again. Um, so, so this is an integral that goes from a to infinity, right? Mm -hmm. So all the value here, all the all of the x here are bigger than a, right? Is that an assumption? No, no, it's just because it's an integral from a to infinity. Okay. Uh, uh, an integral uh, is. Oh, just um, is bigger than just x is, is what you're saying. You're adding everything yes. from a to infinity, so it should be bigger than just x. Yeah. So so x. Think about x as an end. Okay. Right. And it's running from a to infinity, so it's always bigger than a. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or if if you want, think about the concrete definition of the integral, the Riemann sum. So if you, you 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 so so the integral is the Riemann sum and then you you take the limit. So the Riemann sum will always have um, will subdivide the 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 seg the the line from a to infinity into small pieces, mm -hmm. and in each piece you um, you'll be picking an x. Um, and and its value x times f of x. So the x there in the Riemann sum will always be bigger than a. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Great. So so now because of that, uh, we can substitute it by a, and the integral will be smaller. Now another way of seeing that is just to look at a times f of x and x times f of x. So these these are these are two functions and they're always x times f of x is always bigger than a times f of x in the range between a to infinity. Okay. Mm -hmm. And therefore the integrals are, are like that. So because if you have if you have two functions one is bigger than the other then the integral will also be bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's another way of seeing that okay thanks okay yes <laughs> okay other other questions or comments yeah maybe um maybe you're going to tell this but i wanted to uh to comment a little bit about this inequality or some other measure uh, concentration inequalities is that um um in in randomized algorithms the field actually i was working on for many years this inequality is actually used um, for showing that uh, the value of certain variable is uh, sharply concentrated around uh, its expected value. This is like the main usage. So yes. if someone has an, uh, a random variable and wants to say, okay, what's the, like in most cases, if I repeat the process in most cases, what would be the value of this variable? So if one can compute the expected value, so using all these kind of uh, inequalities, we can show, okay, with large probability, 
the value of the variable is close to its expected value. So measuring expected value makes sense to have some idea of what will be the value of this variable in most of the experiments. Yeah, exactly. And if you think if you think that the expected value and the random value value represents the time it takes for the algorithm to run, then if we have this behavior, we can say, oh, we can only, it's enough to look at the expectation to see how much time it will take the algorithm to run. And it will most, most of the time it will be correct. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so that's, that's how you move. Um, in practice, that's how you move from, from, uh, a, a process that uh, is random and you don't know, you know, sometimes it will run, um, it will take that many steps to run, sometimes it will take that many steps to run and you don't know what will happen to to something that you can trust. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like these things about uh, memory that uh, most of the time memory works, but there's, there's a chance that uh, a bit will flip in the memory. So it's it's okay that uh, that a, a bit or two might flip in the memory as long as I know how to calculate the probability um, that uh, the the bit will flip, and and how to and I know how to control it. Now the, the the interesting point about the random variables that we we want to say something like you know like you learn in traditional computer science the O notation you want to say something about the running time as a function of the size of the problem so we still need to understand how you put the size of the problem into this thinking and that that will come uh, uh, but you you want the the behavior to be represented the the, the length the, the time it takes the random algorithm to run be represented by a random variable you want as or said to be able to calculate its average and you want to be able to say that the average is good enough it will take most of the time for you what you need to know about the running time of the algorithm but it needs also to be a function of the size of the of the input data, and that will see how it comes into the game in, in a little while. Great. Any additional questions or comments? Okay. Okay. So, um, right. So, yeah, th thank you very much for, for joining today, and we'll continue next week. And please read, read the lecture notes and give me comments. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.